Good afternoon. It's time for another Campcraft lesson today. I'm John Auden, the Royal Ambassador Consultant for Kentucky WMU and Kentucky Baptist. And last, well, it wasn't last week, it was several weeks ago, I talked about how to put together a personal first aid kit. And um, that comes in handy when you're out camping or backpacking and you have an injury or an illness, you need to be prepared to, to deal with that. Uh, while you're out in the woods. Um, today, I want to talk about a little bit different kit. It's called a repair kit. And uh, the repair kit you use when your uh, gear gets injured or sick, uh, when it's broken and it needs to be repaired. And so we're going to talk a little bit about some things that you can include in a repair kit. I will preface that with this. Um, there's a lot of different ideas about what to put in a repair kit. Um, Based upon my experience and my research, I have things in this repair kit here that I'm going to show you, uh, but uh, people have different ideas. So you may have different ideas. And uh, the, the key thing is, uh, what do you need in your repair kit based upon your experience, based upon your skill level, based upon your camping style, your camping gear, and um, where you're going to be and how far from uh, help you're going to be as well. So um, keep that in mind as I talk through these things. Some of these things you'll say, I don't need that in my repair kit and that's perfectly fine. And, and at other times I'm gonna get finished and I say, well, what about this other thing? And, and if you need that in your repair kit, then that's perfectly fine as well. I maybe have found that I don't. Uh, need that. So we're going to walk through this and talk about what's in this repair kit. Uh, first, let me just show it to you. I've got it in a Ziploc bag here. And um, a lot of people carry it in something like that, or maybe a nylon uh, ditty bag uh, with the drawstring to keep it all contained, uh, however you need to, to keep it all together so it's handy for you. So uh, the first thing I'm going to show you, and this is something that um, just about everybody agrees on when it comes to a uh, camping or a backpacking repair kit, and that is duct tape. And so I have some duct tape here. You'll notice it's not on a roll, like it might come from the store. If you were car camping uh, and weight wasn't an issue, uh, space wasn't an issue, then by all means bring a whole roll of duct tape. Uh, in case you need it. But if you're having to carry your gear very far or you're backpacking, then you want it to be lightweight and not take up much room. And, and this is one way you can do that. A friend showed me this. You just take some duct tape and start to unroll it. And I unrolled about a three inch section and then just folded it back on itself and then just continued to wrap around that, trying to keep it basically in line uh, with itself. And uh, it'll adhere to itself just like it does on the roll and then just come right off. And so this doesn't take up much room. It doesn't weigh much. It doesn't have the cardboard tube in it. And so this is a great way to carry uh, some duct tape and you can use it to repair any number of things, um, shoes, clothes, uh, tent, rain fly, uh, your rain poncho, um, anything like that. So this is your backpack. So this is very handy to have uh, in your repair kit. So that's duct tape. And I'll show you another way you might carry it. Um, so a lot of times people will take duct tape, they'll take strips of it, say six, seven, eight inch strips, and um, they'll wrap that around, say their trekking pole, or possibly around their water bottle and carry it that way. I have here a little medicine bottle and I'll show you what's inside that in just a second. Uh, but I've wrapped duct tape around that. Like I said, six or eight inch strips. Just lay them on there and start wrapping around. Try to keep them as straight as possible. And when one finishes, you cut another piece and start again and wrap it around. And I've got four pieces of duct tape on here uh, in case of emergency. So that's another way that you can carry some extra duct tape. Uh, there's another type of tape that a lot of people are using these days. It's called Tenacious Tape. It's made by Gear Aid, and it comes in a roll as well, though not on a tube. It's just um, a sheet of this, a strip of this just rolled up and held together 
with a clip. And um, this stuff is really good. It's clear when it goes on. Um, the backing is white, but it's actually clear. And it's waterproof. It's flexible. It will adhere to any type of material, uh, whether it be natural fiber or uh, synthetic fiber. So your, your rain tarp, your rain jacket, your tent, your backpack, your clothes, um, it'll adhere to any of that. And unlike duct tape, if duct tape gets too warm, sometimes the, the adhesive on here gets soft and it'll start to slide and pull away. Um, this won't do that. And so this is great stuff. Uh, like I say, it comes in a roll, but you can also buy it in a package um, of patches that are circular. I've cut myself a patch from my roll, and then I realized it'd probably be just as well to just cut a square and take as, all of that I can with me. And then when I'm out on the trail and I need to make a repair, I can cut whatever shape I need it to be. If it needs to be a circle, I can make a circle. If I need a smaller square, obviously I can make a smaller square. So I've got a couple of pieces of that. You might carry two, three pieces of this with you and you can repair a great many things with tenacious tape. So that's something else. Um, and then as far as adhesive goes, uh, a lot of people carry a tube of some kind of waterproof um, liquid adhesive. This is Seam Grip uh, and it's also waterproof and uh, it's made by Gear 8 as well. Um, there's some other brands out there. I think AquaSure or Aqua Seal is the name of another one. And uh, this stuff is great um, for repairing things as well uh, to make a waterproof repair on, a, on your tent, on your uh, rain fly, on your rain gear. Um, I even saw uh, a fella, he took his sewing kit, and I'm gonna show you that, a sewing kit in just a second, took a sewing kit and did a very rough sewing job on on his pants and then took this and put it over the top of that seam that he had sewed back together. And when it dried, he had a nice, tight, secure, flexible, uh, waterproof uh, seal uh, and repair on his pants. So uh, you can use this for a great many things. And this, this tube here weighs one ounce. So it's not very heavy at all. I mentioned the sewing kit. And so I wanna show you that. Going back to my little bottle here, this is, little travel medicine bottle that you might have like Tylenol or something in. Inside of it, I have two needles, sewing needles. So I've got one this size and then I just dropped the other one. And I've got a smaller one. And um, you can use those in a lot of different ways. Uh, obviously you need something to sew with and so uh, thread. And so I have here this little cardboard card. You can use just regular cardboard, but this my, my wife and daughter cross stitch and this is a little uh, floss card that they use to hold their floss that they cross stitch with. And I just asked if I could use one of those and um, put my thread on here. So on, on this side I have, this is brown thread here. I've got the other thread crossing over it, but this is brown thread, just regular thread. And I would use the smaller needle with that and could use that on clothing um, to make a repair if I need to, socks, um, something like that. This other side, this is actually uh, dental floss. <coughs> and dental floss is waxed. And so that allows it to slide through material a little bit easier. Plus it, it uh, is waterproof as well. And so I would use the larger needle um, for that, but I have 15 to 20 feet of each of these threads wrapped around this, this card, and uh, it's very lightweight, and drop that in my repair kit, and it goes along with my um, two needles in my little tube, and then also in this little tube, I have uh, two safety pins, and uh, safety pins can be used in a lot of different ways to help with a strap on your backpack, uh, some people can even take them and tie cord to it and toss it in the water with some bait and use it as a, a fishing hook. So um, these will come in handy as well. I've got a couple of those and they, they go in there so that it doesn't poke or tear or, or rip um, any of my other gear. So I have that in the tube 
in the thread, and that's a sewing kit. Some other things that uh, you might consider having in your um, repair kit, I have here a couple of uh, spare buckles that can be used on uh, my backpack. And um, you would just have to thread that webbing through the ends of it and then use your sewing kit to sew it and, and hold it tight. Um, some people don't carry these. Um, they would use the safety pins and they would make a very temporary repair using the safety pins or tape and adhesive and uh, make their way back to where they could get that buckle either replaced or um, buy a whole new piece of gear. But some people like to carry buckles as well as um, cord locks. And so I have a couple of cord locks here. Those are used on like uh, your food bag or your stuff sack for your uh, sleeping bag or quilt. And um, they come in handy, those break often. But again, there's other ways to do that. If there's a couple of different knots you can learn and, and that would take the place of, of these and you wouldn't need those uh, in your kit. Um, just these uh, four things, the two buckles and the two cord locks add up to about 0.7 ounces or 0.7 ounce and um, if I leave them out then that's that much less I have to carry with me. Um, you want to carry some spare batteries uh, depending on what kind of electronics you take if you have a flashlight or a headlamp or uh, a camera for taking pictures you'll want to know what kind of batteries they use and bring along some spare. I have here two of these flat ones. They go, this is a type of battery that my headlamp uses and it uses two at a time. So I need to carry two, two spare with me and I just have them in a little Ziploc bag uh, to keep them dry. So you'll want to bring something like that. Uh, repairing things, sometimes uh, people have found zip ties or cable ties. Uh, to be very handy. This, this is two uh, four inch ones and then I've got two eight inch ones and uh, you might find that that would come in handy repairing a piece of equipment uh, or gear and uh, so I've got a couple of those. Those are very lightweight and you can buy a whole pack of them real cheap and you'll find you're using them around the house quite often um, so they won't go to waste. So uh, cable ties. Most people have some type of uh, device for lighting their cook stove or lighting a fire. And that, that usually is kept with their cooking kit, um, but it's good to carry a spare. So I have a little mini Bic lighter here um, in my repair kit. You could also carry this in your first aid kit if you wanted to. Uh, these come in handy not only for lighting a fire or your uh, cooking device, but for burning the end of cord, uh, of webbing, anything synthetic like that uh, for sterilizing a needle. Um, so you'll want to carry a spare one of those as well. I find that to be very useful. And then um, I mentioned cord. I've got a roll of nylon paracord and uh, I've got about 50 feet of this wrapped up here. Most people say bring about 30, 25, 30 to 50 feet of it and uh, keep that with you. You can use this to, to make fishing line. Uh, the inside of it can be pulled out and you can use it to make fishing line. You can use it to replace your shoelaces. You can use it to uh, whip uh, together a device, um, say you need to dig with. Uh, you have a broken trekking pole or something like that. Uh, you can use it to obviously replace straps on your backpack temporarily. Um, so this comes in very handy as well to have uh, some paracord. And, th and this is the heaviest thing in my repair kit is this uh, 50 foot of, of cord. So depending on how long you're going to be out and what you're going to be doing, you might take less of this so it's not quite so heavy. But anyways, you'll want some, some cord is a great idea. And then finally, you're going to want some kind of tool uh, for cutting and um, making your repairs. So everybody has seen and probably has a, a multi-tool. I have this one here. It has scissors. It has a knife blade. It has uh, a Phillips head screwdriver, a flathead screwdriver. It has a, a little saw for cutting 
small branches of wood. Um, it has pliers. Um, it has a lot of uh, tools on it, but it is very heavy. If I was going car camping, then right alongside my duct tape, I would have this multi-tool and I would probably find use for it. But if I'm backpacking um, or having to carry my gear very far, I don't want to carry this. It's, it's too heavy. So I would want to go with something uh, lighter. And one of the lightest things you can get, um, there's, there's things in between this and this, um, but, but this is something I have here. This is just your very basic classic um, Swiss Army knife. And it has, in the end, it has a little pick. It also has a little pair of tweezers. And uh, if you have a device like this, you wouldn't need to carry tweezers in your first aid kit. You'd have it here in your little multi-tool. It also has uh, a blade. And then here it has a file. I don't know if you can quite see that, the rough surface, a file, and then a, a flathead screwdriver on top of that. And then finally it has um, a pair of scissors. And these are very sharp and, and very effective. Uh, when I was cutting my duct tape, I used these. When I was cutting my cord, I, I used these. Uh, when I was cutting the tenacious tape, I used this little pair of scissors, and uh, they're very sharp, very effective, and uh, do a great job. Uh, now, some people, instead of carrying something like this, might carry just their regular lightweight, everyday carry pocket knife. This is one I have. It's a Gerber. It has just a single lock blade that's about uh, three, a little less than three inches long. Um, carry that with me every day, and then they might carry a pair of scissors and something just like a pair of kids scissors so you can get an even smaller pair than this and uh, some people will carry those to to do cutting of cord and <clears throat> tape and things like that so there's a lot of different uh, things you can do and carry but uh, for this repair kit I've just got this right here this simple basic um, Swiss Army knife that I carry in there so all of that together weighs 9.2 ounces but if I took the buckles and the cord lock out, um, it would be down to about 8.5 ounces. And uh, depending on the trip, I could lighten that even further. Um, maybe not carry as much cord uh, or something like that. So uh, like I said, it's, this is based upon your experience, your skill level. Um, somebody who has a lower skill level might need buckles. Somebody who has a lot more experience and skill, they could make their repair with a, a safety pin. So you need to base it on, on uh, your skill level and your experience and your gear as well, which, which leads me to some optional things. If you uh, sleep in a tent, uh, which I don't, I use a, a hammock, but if you sleep in a tent and have tent poles, then you'll want to bring along with you a tent pole repair sleeve. Uh, they're about this long and they fit over uh, the tent pole so that if you crack one or break one you can slide that sleeve down over the broken section so that it covers over it and then you can wrap duct tape around either end of that sleeve to hold it in place and you can temporarily mend that uh, tent pole until you can get um, get another one. Um, some people uh, for their cook stove have uh, a cooking device that may have o-rings in it or uh, little orifices that need to be cleaned, so you might want to have a repair kit uh, for dealing with your uh, your cooking device. Uh, I use a little Coke can alcohol stove, and so if I crush that or damage that in some kind of way, I just find another Coke can, and, and the little scissors on here will cut the aluminum in a Coke can, and I'll just cut it and um, make myself a new one. Um, so those are some other things to think about. Uh, now, making a repair kit like this is uh, will fit one of the requirements for the Pathfinder patch in the equipment and shelter area. Um, so that's the Pathfinder patch, and you can find information about making this uh, repair kit like this or any other kind of little kit um, on pages 26 and 27 in the Campcraft manual. And as I've shown you before, that can be found here, 
www.kywmu.org slash campcraft. And um, doing a little kit like this can um, come in real handy while you're out camping and help you earn that Pathfinder patch as well. Uh, but putting this together reminded me of uh, our missions lesson this month. Um, if you remember from last week, we're learning about Jorge and Rebecca. They are church planters in Comarillo in Puerto Rico. Jorge and Rebecca moved there to Comarillo uh, just uh, before Hurricane Maria hit their island and uh, knocked out power, knocked out water, caused a lot of problems. Um, but with some resources and help from Sin Relief and some of their ministry partners back in the States, um, Jorge and Maria were able to open a free laundry ministry in Comarillo and were able to help a lot of people with that physical need. And through that ministry, a great many people heard about God's love for them. And out of those people who heard about Christ and put their faith in Jesus, they were able to start a church called One Church. And Jorge and Rebecca uh, lead that church and continue to reach out to the people in their community. Um, there was a lot of other ways that people were helped and uh, heard about the gospel. In fact, Jorge was able uh, during this time to share uh, the gospel with his cousin. And so I want to read with you a part of that story. Uh, it's found in our RA World magazine on page 14 in the article, God is Real. And I'm going to read uh, just the last three paragraphs of that. It says, Christian is Jorge's cousin. Christian's home was badly damaged by the hurricane. While he was cleaning up the debris, Christian stepped on a nail and his foot became infected. The doctors were thinking about amputating Christian's foot. Jorge visited with his cousin and talked with him about God. And Christian said, I decided to ask God to heal me. And I saw a change in myself. Those prayers were heard. Christian's foot started to heal. And Christian said, that's when I realized that there is a God who takes care of us and protects us at all times. Christian learned that God is real, and he decided to become a Christian. Before the hurricane, Christian had gotten into trouble with the police. After the hurricane and his experiences, he was changed. <clears throat> his mother saw the changes in his life as well, and she decided to become a Christian too. Then Rebecca talked to Christian's sister, who also decided to follow Jesus. Jorge baptized all of them, and they now attend one church. And sin relief has also helped Christian to rebuild his house. Uh, these are just a few of the people Jorge, Rebecca, and Sin Relief have shared God's love with in uh, Comarillo. It hasn't stopped there. Many of these new believers are bringing their families and friends to one church to learn about God's love. In fact, so many people have come to one church that they have had to move to a larger building. God is real, and his love continues to spread. So, uh, when I was putting that kit together, I thought about how um, Jorge and Sin Relief and volunteer mission to, missionary teams went to Puerto Rico to help uh, repair homes um, and bring physical relief uh, based, you know, to fix the damage that had been done by the hurricanes. But in the process, they told people about God, that he is real, that he loves them, and that he can mend the spiritual brokenness that is in their hearts and in their lives. Um, and through that uh, healing, uh, God is bringing salvation to many people. Psalm 147 verse 3 says, God heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. As Jorge and Rebecca, Sin Relief, and volunteer missionary teams find ways to repair the physical damage, um, they are sharing God's healing love and grace with the people of Comorio. Uh, so when you make your repair kit, think about the people of Comorio and pray for them and pray for God's healing and love in their lives. And also pray for Jorge and Rebecca and One Church and Sin Relief as they continue to work in Puerto Rico and in other places in the world to bring physical and spiritual healing um, to the people who are facing brokenness in their lives. Thank you for joining me for this uh, Camp Craft lesson and mission lesson. I hope you have a great afternoon and God bless you.